is another off the wall and I am the dancing queen, except I'm older than 17. And here with me is, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, Rob Peasley, I'm in the uh, Department of Journalism and Electronic Media. All right, so we're gonna start off like we always start off off the walls by me telling you what I've heard from the streets. Didn't fail me this time. All right, so here's what I know. That you are a fan of Lord of the Rings, you've been to New Zealand, that when you teach, you teach to learn. If you're coming to his class, you're going to learn something because the way he designs his curriculum is so you learn something. It's not one of those classes where they give you this information and you know, send you off to go do stuff. No, this is a class where you are getting hands-on information. He's working with you. He's available after class if you need help. He's answering questions, any questions you have. Even expanding upon things he talked in class if you want to expand upon it. That's what I've heard about him. Also, I hear that uh, attendance policies, very strict, be a class, so if you go to his class, I heard that too. Um, is all that true? Uh, more or less, you know, I think the two things go hand in hand. You, you need to be in class to get the most out of it. And I didn't used to have an attendance policy. Actually, my, my uh, thinking coming into this job was if uh, it's my job to make the class interesting enough that you want to be there. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then that's on me. Uh, but I've reconsidered that position because there are, I've realized there are other external factors that would uh, maybe contribute to a person's attendance or choice not to attend. Right. Um, so the idea is to make the, um, uh, the, the factors that are weighed in that decision weigh in the favor of coming. Okay, all <laughs> right. So we're going to start off with, uh, actually this is very related, what's the type of student you don't like to have in your class? Someone who needs to make some improvements before they show up. Well, you know, I wouldn't say there's an, there's a kind of student that I don't like to have in class. I mean, I like having everybody there, but I do think that the more engaged you are, it's not it's not an accident that the students who sit in the front couple of rows mm -hmm. tend to do the best in the class. Um, they're they get more out of it. They're more engaged in the conversation. I tend to teach fairly conversationally, even in a in a lecture environment, mm -hmm. um, and so students who take part in that give and take, um, you know, I appreciate that a lot. And, you know, the one thing that I guess frustrates me is if I look out into the audience and I see the texting going on, that's, um, I take that personally and, uh, and I'll usually call people out on it. All right, so to sum this all up, be engaged. It's like basketball, the rock's coming. Always <laughs> look at the rock. <laughs> Rock me in the ball if you don't know. Okay, we'll just get that out. By the way, I forgot to mention this. He actually picked out this environment. If you like the environment, this is a fit of Dr. Peasley's personality. Um, so, something new we're doing off the wall, trying to let the people pick their environments. So, just the case, just to let you know, this is part of the environment. We're actually in the Medkin Theater, I believe that's the way you pronounce that. If you uh, like the environment, again, part of his personality. More reasons to take his class. All right. Moving on to the second part of the, of the planned questions is what class is your zone, the one that you teach like no other? I think probably in terms of the, the feedback that I've gotten, mm -hmm. it's probably writing for feature film, screenwriting. Right. Um, it's a small class, usually 20 students, and we take, we go from basically having no experience writing for feature film to producing the first act of a feature screenplay. Um, and the feedback that I've generally gotten in that course has been probably the most positive in terms of um, students feeling that they really get something out of it, that mm -hmm. they really, that they, that they can see uh, improvement in what they, what, what their skill set is. Yeah. Um, and I also love teaching the class. I mean, it's, it, you know, uh, stories, telling, teaching story structure, teaching characterization, dialogue. I mean, that's just fun. And uh, we get to, you know, talk about a lot of films and, and watch a couple and read some scripts and what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. That's <laughs> awesome. All right. So final question of the planned questions is, What's a class people should look out for you for in the future? Uh, generally, I teach VizCom a lot, visual communication, um, and I imagine that that'll, I'm not teaching it right now, but I imagine that'll come back around again. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the writing for feature film class is in the spring, mm -hmm. uh, every spring. And then I do teach a lot in the grad program. Um, so you, sometimes half of my teaching load every semester is grad related. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not always um, available for both of the classes that I teach at the undergrad level. Um, I'm hoping that a class that I teach called the Blockbuster mm -hmm. uh, will come up again pretty soon. That's a course that basically looks at the history and structure of the film industry um, and the entertainment industry more generally. Um, I've taught that I think three times. And so if you know the, the rhythm holds that should come back around again pretty soon all right all right 
It seems like you have a lot of interesting classes. Not to be biased, don't, don't think I'm biased. <laughs> but you, yeah, you, you're an interesting one here. Yeah, they're, I mean, students tend to, I think, um, relate to courses that deal in pop culture. I mean, I think it, there's an easy, uh, it's an easy sell. And so I, I, I'm sort of like the Wicked Witch and Hansel and Gretel. I lure them in with the promise of cookies and cupcakes, and then I, then I hit them with theory and things like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to learn. Uh, all right. So you ready to get off the wall here? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Don't be nervous. All right. So first <laughs> off the wall question is, are you aware that you have a fan club? Uh, no. I'm not aware of that. Yeah, yeah. There's actually a little Peasley fan club. I like to call it the Peasley fan club. There's a group of students who really like you and mention your name so much, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. well, that's great. Yeah. Do they have a website or? No, 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 <laughs> okay. but they, they will talk about you to the ends of the earth, your script Good. writing class, your blockbuster class. How you have a class coming up in New Zealand? Yeah, okay. yeah, we have, yes. yeah, we have a uh, study abroad course uh, coming up um, summer two of 2014. Mm -hmm. Jared Foster and I are taking a group down to look at relationships between tourism and media and then also to do some uh, photography. While we're down there, so. And you're a big fan of Lord of the Rings. They also mentioned this too. Mm -hmm. Remember, we get in a little. Well, that's what I did my dissertation on was Lord of the Rings tourism. Ah. So I I went to New Zealand kind of um, for fun and found this Hobbiton location where they shot the scenes from that part of the Lord of the Rings films, mm -hmm. and I was just fascinated by it. I've been a Tolkien nerd from way back, and um, so I got really interested in what that experience was of going and touring a place that we see on screen. And so I went back and did my dissertation re research in Hobbiton. Oh, that's pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> so you know your way around New Zealand? Is that what I'm hearing here? Yeah, I know my way around pretty well. Right. Um, I hope so. I'm going to be leading the group around, so hopefully I know my way around. All right, so we're going to take it to the classroom. Has there ever been a moment in class where things have just gotten so far off topic, but still relative to what the class is about? Mm -hmm. Sure, uh, quite a bit, actually. Um, it happens more in grad classes, honestly, mm -hmm. because they're more discussion-based and um, usually my, my approach to grad seminars is that I'll, the students will actually lead the discussion uh, or the reading, the discussion about the readings for that week. So often they will take it in directions that I certainly hadn't anticipated. So, another off the off top of my head, are you ready for this one? Mm -hmm. What is the craziest moment you had in New Zealand? Um, let's see. Well, the, probably the most, the scariest moment I had in terms of, because I was there to do my dissertation research, mm -hmm. I had this very uh, incorrect view of how things were going to happen in terms of, I was going to do a lot of interviews with people there, mm -hmm. and we were staying at a hostel, and I imagined that this hostel would be sort of this nice place where everybody who went to Hobbiton would stay that night, okay. sit around the fire, maybe drink a beer, and that's how I would do my interviews with, with <laughs> tourists, you know? And we got there and the, uh, the hostel was, I think there were two people who were staying there and they both had ankle bracelets. And, and I think it was basically a halfway house. And it was half like dilapidated, half falling down, barely standing. So we had to go stay in a hotel outside of town where of course there were no Hobbiton tourists. And so for about 24 hours, I thought my dissertation is done. I'm done. I'm gonna have to quit school. Uh, you know, I'll be shamed in the academic community forever. Did but you, it all worked out. Did you interact with anybody with that? Yeah. So in my head, I just imagine you walking up to him. So what do you think about the Hobbit? They just give you this mean look of, get away from me. Yeah, well, it's funny about that. I mean, the locals were, were pretty, like, they didn't understand why people would come and visit it. They were, you know, it was just like, it was like t the 10 acres of sheep farm right next to it. Except this one, you know, had pieces of wood in the ground. And people would pay 50 bucks a head to go out and see it. Wow. So they were, they were totally perplexed by that. But, but in the end, it all worked out. I, I, I re regrouped and, and got it all found done. my way. Yeah. You went to a halfway <laughs> I'm sorry, that's, that's gold of story. Yeah, hostile and, you know, sort of name only, I think. Oh, boy, boy. That's sort of like the, it was more like the hostile films oh. than, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, the more I think about it, it's just like you're just, uh, can we, no? Oh, we should just go to a hotel. We need to get yeah. here now. Yeah, we'll go. Yeah. Sorry, thanks, sorry, for, sorry to bother you, sir. <laughs> all right, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> so, next question off the top of my head. Uh, Christmas is coming up. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea for Christmas gifts or any Christmas presents for your children right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cohen's interested in music, so um, we're going to take the plunge and try and get them an actual musical instrument. Whoa. Maybe a Whoa. ukulele or uh, maybe a drum set, if I can talk. Do you uh, play music yourself? No, no, which is why I want him to. Because <laughs> I... Me to sleep, son. I've, I've always wanted to... to be a musician, but I never, you know, never took. So I want to give him that opportunity. 
Why did you want to be a musician? Like, what, what happened with that dream? Oh, it was, I wouldn't call it a dream. It was uh, more of a, you know, I have a guitar, uh, and I've started to learn how to play it a few times, but it's, you know, it's just never... Was this a get the girl's guitar, or was this just a, no, I want to do something different guitar? It was more of, my, actually, my wife gave it to me just, when we were uh, dating, um, and uh, it was more of a, become a more well-rounded person. Sort of uh, my sister plays guitar, and I'm totally jealous of her, and I think that's where the, a lot of the yeah. impetus came from. So... Two more questions, we're going to quickly try to wrap this up. Second to last question is this one. Have you ever gone to any film festival at all? Um, so I've been to tons of film festivals. Of, um, like probably South by Southwest? A couple times at South by. Um, Anything crazy happened there? It gets crazy. It's oh, like, South by, yeah, it's nothing but crazy. It's, it's <laughs> all crazy. I South by, actually. <laughs> it just it's, uh, it's nuts. And especially for those three days where film, music, and interactive over, overlap. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, Austin's, you know, the center of the universe yeah. for those three days, um, at least as far as, you know, anything related to entertainment or technology. Any crazy concerned. stories there that you uh, Oh, yeah. Share? I mean, nothing specific, but if you just, you know, coming out of a film screening at 1130, 12 o'clock at night, walking down 6th Street in Austin during South By, you're going to see some <laughs> so, amazing things. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually saw somebody, I saw a fight come spilling out of a pizza place as I was walking by the last time I was down there. Old West style. Did you run? You look like no. I stayed and I, I was looking at it. I was, yeah. you know, uh, you don't, I don't see know it every why. day. I have this image of you of being the timid guy. Are you a timid person? Uh, no, I wouldn't necessarily say that. Um, when I compete, I'm probably not very timid. Compete as in? I play basketball. Oh, whoa! Yeah. See, shocker. I did, would not. I'm not. I'm not saying I play it well, <laughs> and, but I I do actually put on you know basketball shoes and and dribble a ball and shoot it All occasionally right. with other people. All right. so. Okay, so final question here. Mm -hmm. So I gotta try to make it good. It would be a good one. Here we go. Have you ever seriously considered working on a production or tried to get into like a major film production? And if so, you know, what was it and how far involved did you get into it? Well, technically I'm involved in a production right now. I'm I'm working very slowly and fitfully on a documentary for my dad. My dad passed in uh, twenty twelve. And he was a Vietnam vet and and had some really other really interesting dimensions of his life. And um, so I'm interested in doing that as a way to kind of honor him and, and get to know him a little bit better, yeah. honestly, but also as a way to think about sort of the last half of the 20th century, looking at his life as emblematic of that time period. You know, it's kind of the larger thematic goal and I'm in the very you know I've only got a little bit of footage and there's a lot a long way to go but technically that's in production right now and it may take me 10 years um, you'll get it done. but I but I hope to get it done yeah I mean especially now that I'm I, I've uh, I've submitted my tenure dossier and you know working toward 10 years of, is a pretty time-intensive process and um, not that I'll necessarily not be working anymore but I'll I'll be a little less under the gun uh, right. assuming I get tenure and um, that'll give me some, maybe some flexibility to do some more work with that. All right, well, good luck with that. That's Thanks. All right, well, before we go, anything to shamelessly promote? Uh, your wisdom on fandom, <clears throat> which I forgot to mention, he knows a lot about fandom. Mm -hmm. uh, the New Zealand thing, anything shamelessly? Yeah, that's, the, that's the biggest thing is the, the study abroad. Uh, summer 2, 2014, New Zealand, 16 days, yeah, yeah. traveling throughout both islands of New Zealand, hanging out with hobbits and Dwarves and wizards. I don't have a motion for Hobbit. Would it exist? Just hang out with Hobbits. I yeah, guess. pretty much any dancing I think is is uh, is fine with Hobbits. So. Rub rub, chub chub. No, that's not it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. Thank you so much. Have a great Thanks, day. Thanks. I appreciate it. Gotcha. Living crazy.